Okay. Okay, it's quarter past five, so in my opinion, we can start. Please take your seats and <laughs> come in if you are interested in the, my, my talk. So let's start from the presentation. Okay. There wouldn't be a lot of slides because I decided somehow to let the code or rather the tool speak for itself. However, just for the formal requirements and reasons, it would be nice to also have some introductory slides before we will dive deep into IntelliJ. So, I welcome you warmly and my talk regarding IntelliJ debugger tips and tricks. During that talk, we will try to somehow uh, reveal some, maybe not hidden, but uh, not so uh, obvious features that are being uh, that are built into this tool and see how powerful they can be and uh, what we uh, can get uh, of them in some different scenario of the, during the debugging process. As, uh, as, as usual, this good presentation should start from the slide about this uh, speaker. So uh, my name is Marcin Hrost. I work currently as a Java developer and technical lead in JCommerce in Katowice. And also in parallel, I'm a technical trainer in Sages in Warsaw. I'm conducting uh, usually workshops from reactive programming, clean code and modern Java, but not only limited to that. In my opinion, this is completely enough regarding my humble person. Uh, if you want to somehow get in touch with me, there would be the penultimate sli slide with the link to my repo that I will be presenting uh, today during the, um, during the talk. And then just let's go directly to the raw meat, to the debugger, let's start to to present what we can get from it. Okay, so this is the probably the last slide I will show. And let's directly go to the IntelliJ it, because it makes no, no, no more sense to present it. Okay. okay. I need to somehow, I, I hope that it's somehow visible. I need also to stop the presentation because I have no idea what it, why it is not stopping. Okay. Okay, we are in the IntelliJ. Yeah, I hope so. Okay. This application is a very simple one that it's somehow representing something like block. It allows to for the users to add some posts, display them, search for the posts, and uh, look for the content of the certain post. It's a very simple one. It's just the uh, like a, it's, it's, it's a console application, and I think we can start from the first simple case scenario. But this is uh, one important first thing. If you want to debug the application, let's run it in the debug mode. No, because this is the only way to debug it. If you, will if, if you just run it via this uh, yellow uh, green arrow, you will probably not be able to debug anything. So probably this is the first common mistake we can make when we, when we are using IntelliJ debugger, not starting it at all. And in my opinion, if we run it properly and do not forget about to run it, then this is the halfway to the success, in my opinion. Then we can only get used of some of its features. So let's start, let's try to run this application in debug mode. And this is exactly the option, <laughs> the second one on the, on the context menu. So let's start to debug it and look what it can offer us, how it works, how it's going. And we will probably observe that something is somehow wrong in this application, and we will be trying to analyze with the tools how to fix it and uh, what, what can we improve it to work it properly. By the way, before we start using this application, it's also worth to say that debugger as such is the tool that it's not only used for spotting the bugs, however, of course, the, 
its, its name can suggest that, but its uh, spotting bugs is only a narrow subset of the things that we, for example, can uh, get out of them. In my opinion, the very important and usually completely neglected feature of the debugger is the possibility, for example, to get keen on of the code we got from someone. Because usually, as, as you can see, you, we are usually not the very happy developers that just are able to code from the scratch to write the application in the greenfield and so on and so on. Usually the situation is completely different. Unfortunately, we came into the project and learn from our manager that, for example, so, uh, Yusek has just left, and uh, usually we know why. <laughs> and uh, Yusek has left some code, and now the code is your problem, not Yusek, no, no longer Yusek. So you look into this code, and you start, um, start thinking what you should do. Uh, one option includes giving a notice. But of course, we will, we will say, OK, no, let's try to somehow cope with it. So what we, but of course, the code is very, uh, very hard to read, probably ha has no test at all or a scarce amount. So what, we, what you should do as an uh, unfortunate developer here, you should run this code under the bugger, and you should try analyzing how it behaves and what it happens uh, inside this code. And uh, after you will somehow get the, learn the code, what it does, or, uh, usually including some of the techniques I will present later, for example, the non-suspending brain points and so on, you will be able, after learning the code and um, maybe also um, somehow discovering that it does not work exactly as you, as, as, you, as, you, as you expected and usually it does not, then you would be able, after that, to start writing integration tests because this is the second step to the success, and only after then, after these two steps, so learning the code and writing the test, covering with the safety net, you would be able to somehow refactor or even rewrite it because now you know how the code works. Because without that, you, uh, what you can only do is something who, uh, is some form of the anti refactor anti pattern you are usually uh, some explain to my students or trainees that it's edit and pray and usually the pray does not help okay let's go let's run this code and then let's see what's what's happening there i also change uh, some of you that you are somehow used to IntelliJ, may be a little bit surprised that the debugger tool window, it's being shown on the top of the screen, usually it's on the bottom. This is done on purpose because uh, uh, from the previous presentations I have participated in, it seemed that the people in the back seats are not able to see what's uh, below the middle line of the screen, so I, would, I, I just tried to move it to the top, maybe it would help. I also hope that the size of the font is enough. It's not, we also try to somehow increase it. But I think it should be enough. I increase it from the 13 to the 20, so 20 font, it should be somehow readable. Okay, let's go to the application. Sorry for the a little bit long uh, introduction. We will see that we run it and we see few options. As you can expect, show post titles, search posts, show post content, add post exit application. As you can expect, the first thing, let's try to run the first option. Just try to, to see what, we, what, what posts we have. So select option one. As you can see, there are none. Okay, that's fine. That's completely what we, what we expected. We will be able somehow to change it and alter the behavior of this uh, application, but now let's try to add some post and see how it behaves. My content. And now look at the posts. Yeah, it's my post. Let's also sh uh, let's show its content. Enter post ID. That's fine. Okay. So we are more or less glad about the first glance of the application. Okay, it's fine. So let's try to somehow e exit it. And what we what we see, it does not exit. It's somehow like 
Vladimir Lenin. It's, 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 it's still alive. You cannot kill it at all. So, of course, yeah, it's not a problem from the formal point of view because there is a, a nice red button here that we can use to, to close it. But, however, as we run it already under debugger, let's try to somehow check what's happening inside this app and why it's not being, why it's not being able to close. So, let's go to the block, C, block CLI class because it's the main, main um, the core of the program. And let's see, okay, there are, we are just scanning the, the, the line, just choosing the option, we, sorry, reading the option that the user has been entered, and check whether the action is a terminal one. And in such case, we should break, but we are not. So, um, of course, we can just somehow put the breakpoint here and so just press the zero key to somehow get to that, but Let's assume that we, for example, we do not want to uh, terminate this application now, but let's uh, but be able to somehow pause the debugger, break it, uh, when we will really be want to somehow exit the application. So, uh, let's put the breakpoint here, but as you can see, the breakpoint ha can have something like condition which usually is not being, uh, it's not so obvious from the very beginning, but we, we can try to somehow look what's happening there. And in our case, let's assume that uh, our condition should be that action, yeah, because it's action, we have enum for that, exit application, and just be equal to action. And that's fine, we will add that. Okay, it's okay. Uh, this one? Okay, 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 that's fine. We'll try. The question is whether it, hmm, it can be problematic because unfortunately it's, mm, oh, something like that. Uh, we can just uh, move it from the non modal one to such things and now it should be more, much more visible if we click for example for the more options it's it the breakpoint windows is being opened and we can see all the breakpoints in the application and also the, the our one and you can see this condition uh, so we are trying to check whether the exit application is being our action so everything seems fine let's click the done button okay and now Let's uh, try to select another action. Let's try also uh, display all the posts once again. As you can see, there are no posts, but definitely we came through this breakpoint. And now let's try finally to close the application. So select zero once again, and now we are being stopped. Okay? So definitely the action is being parsed properly, we are going to the exit application. However, as you can see, probably there is some problem with that. So let's go one step further to, the, to this one and check already what is the result of action is terminal option. Because there is possibility to do that, we can just select this block by mouse and click with Alt and left mouse button. Okay, the question is will we be able to? Okay, sorry for that. Something is wrong. Let me let me click once again. Okay, if not, I will just try to add to watch. Should be should be fine. If not, ah, oh, sorry, not not that not this, but okay. Mm, sorry. Ah, yeah, finally, because usually on the my Mac, my keyboard I'm not able to find the Alt. Yeah, but if you click with the Alt keyboard, you can see that the result of this is false. The question is why? So let's look into this code, and probably it wouldn't be a big surprise if we look in this, this uh, enum that probably I had some typo, this exit application, it should be, should be set to true. So let's change it. And of course, stop the application because unfortunately we need to somehow compile it and so on. So let's stop it. But now we will, you should be able to run it once again. Okay. So this was the first thing I wanted to show. Probably most of you know that, but uh, sometimes it's being hidden that each breakpoint has can have a condition and we can break on it only in certain circumstances. 
not always, which is some, especially in some, in some cases, for example, when we are setting the breakpoint in a very often visited part of the application, if we are not using this condition in breakpoint, we will probably, after 30 seconds, we will, we won't, uh, we will not be eager to use this breakpoint anymore because we will be hitting it every second. So it's not the, so it's not the, not the case. But this condition allows us to exactly stop when we want to stop on this breakpoint. Okay, I can expect that this was exactly something simple, but let's go further. Okay, the application is being run, fine. So now, let's, let's think about something more sophisticated. So, uh, as, you can, uh, as, you can, uh, as you have saw previously, the application at the start does not have any posts included, which is the correct situation. However, in some circumstances, we want, for example, to have the, the data being pre-prepared from the debugging session. And usually it's not a problem, but let's assume that we have the very complicated setup uh, during the debugging sessions. For example, to, we need to have some real data. Okay, to have some real data, we, for example, need to connect to the real database to set up something and so on and so on and so on, maybe even to come to connect to the production one and so on, okay. And usually, such complicated setup can somehow mm, make us not eager to trying to debug this application properly or, uh, or the debugging process is taking too much time. And usually, the problem is that, that the problem we are debugging it's not regarding completely the, the, the part that uh, it's, rega it's regarding the preparing the data for the, for the application. So we just want to da the data to be returned, prepared, and so on, and we want to, for example, debug the problem why the data prepared, uh, returned from the database are not properly filtered. So it would be nice to have some feature that would allow us to, for, to do some additional things, prepare some data, when the application is being run uh, through the debugger, prepare data for us. And then we came to something which is not obvious from the first point of, first point of view, and it's somehow counterintuitive, it's the non-suspending breakpoints. Because usually if someone thinks about breakpoints under debugger, it's exactly, it's in, uh, intuitive behavior is that this breakpoint is just stopping the application at this point and we are able to somehow analyze what's happening inside. And that's fine, because usually breakpoints are, are being used for that. But there is additional thing. We are able to add non-suspending breakpoints. So definitely the debugger checks whether we reached some lines, even can analyze the condition exactly of the, the regular breakpoints with the condition as I presented before, but it does not stop the application. And the question could be, what for? So let's see what. Let's, let's, let's open the, our block CLI and add, to, add one thing that we'll be able to do. Let our, let's open our blog application. As you can see, we are just preparing something here, importing the scanner, and preparing the block CLI, which is the main class, and now we run this block CLI. And as you can expect, this is probably the, the, the place where we, should, where we should somehow hook and add this data for the debugging session. So let's add the breakpoint here, and now, uh, of course, open this small window, and as you can see, there is very interesting checkbox. Suspend, which is, usually, which is by default being checked because we expect breakpoints to suspend the execution of the program. Okay, so let's uncheck it. And now, okay, well, but I can say, but what for? Because now, uh, now the breakpoint uh, is just completely transparent, does not do anything. Okay, so now we can check another checkbox. It's evaluate and lock. And this checkbox allows us to evaluate some code and this code will be executed when this breakpoint will be hit. So let's now copy this code because I'm not able to. Uh, sorry for the for to mm, to mm, somehow take it from from my uh, from the heart, but uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Let's let me and D. Exactly, I took this code from that. 
Okay, exactly. My code will just add two posts. Uh, we'll just execute post service because we have the reference to that, and we will add two posts there. And it should be completely, completely enough what we need. Now let's go there. Let's somehow blow, go to this block application once again and analyze this breakpoint. Yeah. Let's let's go some more because yeah, now everything should be visible on the top of the screen. And let's add this evaluate here. Also, let's try to make it a little bit wider, but yeah, it could be a problem. Yeah. And we will add two posts there. Okay, done. Now, let's try to run this application once again under debugger. And see what happens. Yeah, and now we are able to, to we, are, we have two posts inside. We were, a, we, were, we were able to add some data to the program without connecting the external database, Recom honestly speaking, recompiling it and so on and so on. There is not a problem, and what's, what is more, as, as you can expect, if we, for example, disable this breakpoint and rerun the application, the data will not be added, so we are able, more or less, to somehow steer the application and check in which scenario we want to uh, use this additional data and so on. And this is the first thing that, uh, that the not suspending breakpoints allow us to do, but not only the one. Because the second thing you can observe is the question, uh, you, you, as you already saw, that this, uh, that this checkbox, evaluate and log, has honestly two flavors. The first one was evaluate, and we exactly use it now, but also the log is something uh, that, that can help uh, us because we are able to log something during the execution of the program. This is a very common scenario. Usually when we are debugging something and, not, and something is completely wo not working in certain area of code, what you, uh, a usual developer does is to add some extra debugging statements inside the code. Uh, also with some prefix, usually you know which one. Uh, <laughs> okay, but that's not about it. The problem is that uh, the adding these uh, logs can, ha can also have some disadvantages. The first one is we need to change the code. So, of course, every change to the code is a risk. If, even if you do it with the uh, as most safest way as possible. And the second one, that the um, logging statements can accidentally remain in the code base. In the backend, it's rather not a big issue because in the worst case, uh, what we can only get in such situations that the sysadmin would just look into the log application and say, sorry, user, what does it mean dupa in this log? But okay, but still. But of course, uh, frontenders are unprivileged in this position because console logs, unfortunately, remain and just, for example, can uh, somehow put a lot of un uh, unnecessary stuff on the browser console, which is not a proper situation. So, uh, summing it up, definitely logging via just uh, putting system on print line or even log info with the proper logger is not a solution, especially we are debugging. So let's try to look what's ha what, ha what's, what is happening. Let's, uh, let's exactly see, let's see what uh, post we have. We have to post debugger sucks and snacky, sneaky streams. And let's, let's see whether we are able to somehow search for the post. Let's check and select the option number two and see, okay, hmm, this debugger sucks, it's, it contains letter D, so let, let's check whether this post will be found. Yeah, it's found. So, okay, it's, it's being... It's being, it's being found, okay, let's, let's uh, so definitely probably either the <laughs> something, uh, unfortunately, um, Probably to the lower case, so let's also some, so let's 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 search once again. X, okay, it's being found, and of course we can check hmm, what's happening there. And let's go for, uh, to the post service because this is the one service that is responsible for searching the post. 
And you can see, okay, the first we can do, the first thing we can do is, of course, the situations that we somehow, uh, because it's better such post. And you can see, there's nothing surprising, there's the filter method that uh, it's just filtering the post by the, by the query or by title or content. And uh, in, this, in this area, we can check whether the post is being found or not. And of course, if something is wrong, not working here properly, of course, the first thing we can do is just extend this lambda, add some uh, curly braces, add log uh, statements inside. But, uh, you know, it's a lot of the fuse and probably we will not do it properly and, and also we can remain. So, let's use this not suspending breakpoint here. And now, it would be a little bit surprising because, as you can see, if you are trying to add some breakpoints in the line when the lambda is being, the stream operation is being defined, IntelliJ asks us where exactly we should put this breakpoint because this, from the, from the formal point of view, such line, uh, it's being executed twice. The first one uh, is that when the, the operation, the, the function filter is being called on the stream because when the stream is being built, and the second one is where the lambda is being executed for the each uh, element of the stream. Definitely, in our case, we are interested in the second option, so we are just selecting this, this breakpoint here. And, as you can see, we can also, now we should add more options of that. And let's try to add some, field, some evaluate and lock here. But, of course, uh, of course, we can just start from this uh, filter, and this would be for for and this should be um, post and this should be should work more or less because uh, post is uh, just the value class so probably this should this should be able to somehow print us this post but of course uh, we then we will check how it's going so let's go let's run this once again okay and also one thing i missed this breakpoint should be not suspending one because if not it's, it makes no sense to to run it so okay let's now let's go Let's do run this once again. Let's search for this post. And as you can see, now, without adding any logging statement inside the code, we are just, uh, we are just we are able to somehow log something when is, which is going through the application, when the application hit the breakpoints. That's fine. Of course, uh, we, this should be something more sophisticated, and uh, you, also I'm not able to write it from my heart, but of course it's something like that, so we are using string format. We are just pasting uh, whether query is being used and what is the result of the search, so let me change it somehow. But exactly the, the method of working is exactly the same. We are going to this post service and just change this breakpoint properties and add something like there. Yeah, okay, done. Now let's, and run, let's go around once again. Yeah, and now you can see that none of these posts are being filtered for each of the results the, the, it's false. So definitely when something is not correctly working with searching for the posts, we are able to somehow um, ch check uh, what happens and uh, which posts are, be are being filtered, what was the result and so on and so on. So we are somehow more or less able to log it. And also what is nice, we can just switch it on and off with one click of the, of the property, just uncheck this log, pro uh, just uh, for example, mute this breakpoint and everything will be turned off. So definitely this is fine option, for example, to prepare some breakpoints uh, in advance and then turn it off, turn it on when it's needed. Okay, next thing. Let's try to see another thing. Let's try to add post on our own. Okay. And I will just, some, I will do something like that. My very, very long title. And my content. Okay. okay. The question is whether it has been added or not. Let's see that. Hmm. The post is missing. What happened? What's going on there? And as you can see, such things probably means that there was something, uh, there was some error situations in the code, something was wrong, but we are not able to spot the situations because 
Yeah, and now is the, the very, very interesting thing. Let's open the breakpoints once again. As you can see, there is a special kind of breakpoints, the exception ones. With the breakpoints, you are able to catch, uh, spot this, uh, somehow break the execution on the point when exception is being thrown within the code. And what is more, you can, uh, let's also check what kind of uh, class. In such case, I just, uh, I, I just selected that it should be any exception. And the, f the in interesting thing is that, that also we can decide whether we should, for example, check for code and, or also for an uncode exception. And usually, much more interesting situation is when we are trying to this, this first select because uh, the most problems with such errors we can, uh, we can expect is that uh, there is an exception being thrown within the code, but it's being swallowed in one of the layers of the applications and we are not able to somehow check w whether it, uh, what, what really happened in there. So let's, let's do not extend its talk. Let's, let's go further and just try to repeat the situation once again. Okay. And here we go. Now it seems that in our at post method, the, there is an exception being thrown. If the title is le more, uh, has its length more than 20 characters, then we do not accept such uh, posts being added to our database in memory one. But the question is, hey, the exception is being thrown here, fine, but uh, so why we are not being noti notified about that? So the answer should be revealed in the call stack. Of course, the method execute it does not give us it leads us to the answer, but in the method run, yeah. Can you see this thing? This is the anti-pattern in programming that I call Pokemon. It's gotta catch them all. So f f catch all exceptions and forget about it because, you know, printing something that exception is being thrown is only a problem because can somebody can spot it and ask it why, what, it has been, what it has been thrown. So, but okay, exceptions are not somehow being added to the code not for, for purpose. So let's somehow fix it and somehow at least lock that something is being wrong here. System error. Stack trace. At least now we'll be able to somehow spot such situations in the code. So it, this this exception breakpoint allowed us to find such erroneous situations in this pod. Okay. Okay. All these things I presented already. They are somehow about observing the state of the application, somehow uh, we are behaving as a passive witness. But, of course, debugger is much more powerful and the very important thing to remember is that the debugger not only allows us to watch what happens, but also it allows us to change, uh, change the flow of the execution of, uh, in, of program of course, to a certain ex extent, because uh, as you would be able to see in the next few minutes, uh, we cannot do anything because we are somehow limited by the, for example, by the language. But still, it is at least so powerful that it allows us to, to do some certain things. Okay, let's go to the, um, to the some, uh, post service method. And we will try to somehow check what, ha what can happen if you are trying, for example, to ask for some posts. Let's put the, uh, the regular breakpoint here without any, any certain things. And, with, and let's try, try to run the application and go, go there. Okay. Okay, we probably we, we have already these two posts, exactly because my, my non-suspending breakpoint is still alive, so that's fine. Let's try to show the po content of the post, but let's put the non-existing post ID. And we are here. As you can expect, if we just try to find posts with given ID, we will probably return nothing. But 
As you can see, this post ID variable is just the local and the function argument, and of course, it can be being altered. Let's try to put the zero number here and resume the execution flow of the program. So we, as you can see, we are able to, uh, to change something. And of course, in the console, yeah, you see that exactly we returned the post of the, of the zero, with the zero ID. So we, would, we were able to alter something in the program. Are we able to alter anything? Of course, no, because we are somehow limited by the language, as I saw, uh, told previously. So let's try to do it once again. And now let's try, for example, to, because we are, as you can see, we, are, we see something like post. This is array list. We try to, for example, change the value of this, of this variable. Let's, for example, see, assume, OK, this should be the empty list of the post. Set value. So list of. Why not? Yeah. And you can see the Java say, sorry, there are some limitations. You cannot change the, the value of the final field, even you want. Of course, you, you, some, probably there are some tricks to do that. But in my opinion, in such case, a bugger does not allow us to do that. So unfortunately, we are not able to change more than we expected. So let's, let's leave it, let's see if it was. Probably this should return the no, no post at all. But now let's go a few steps further because we are only changing the value of a var variable, but we can do much, much more. So let's go there once again. OK. You can see that we have something like call stack here. And call stack, it's just the, it shows us that we somehow deep dive into the stack of the functions and we, we somehow are at the down the, the more in the inner level here. And of course, this function get post has been run from this one frame above here. We are just getting post service get post. And let's assume that, for example, during the process of the debugging, we, for example, incidentally stepped into this function, but we do not want to somehow go through all of it. We just want to return uh, something that uh, we already want to be used in the, f in the further processing of the debugger. So, of course, we, there is one simple thing that we can do on the call stack. If we click, on, uh, on this frame, there is an option force return. And it means that we, at any level, at any point of this operation being executed, we can say to the, the Java, the, the virtual machine, OK, I don't want to somehow proceed within this function more. Just let's return uh, something from the function and use this value further uh, in the processing in the one frame above. So. Of course, what we return must be exactly of the same type of the return value of the signature of the method, which is, which is completely uh, understandable. If we, try, for example, return a string from that, Java will probably just say, sorry, string cannot be assigned to optional. It's not possible. So let's, uh, let's try to do, do, uh, put something better here. OK, fine. So of course, it's not a, so let's try to something like optional of. And new plus content DTO. Yeah, and post content DTO, fortunately, it only has, let's also somehow make it bigger. OK, ha, ha, ha. OK. OK, it's OK, now it should be fine. OK, OK, now it's, let's, let's close it. Uh, two enters, unfortunately, tomorrow. OK, OK. And we just drop the frame. We return from that. And we are in the, as you can see, we are back on the top uh, one frame upper from this one we can hold. And you can see if we just go one step further, this post content DTO exactly is what we have returned from that, from that function. So if we just, so we just altered the execution of the method as such. And in some situations, if we just resume this program, 
Exactly, we will see. Ha ha ha. So we are able to alter the execution. Of course, it's not only the, set, the, the, the one of the, op the, the available options. The next one is something very similar that you can expect from this. Uh, from the, the, the some, it's something the something that um, this the um, this, uh, very something very similar. Let's go further. Let's have oh, something like that, and we in such case we just return something from the function. But we can also decide that okay, we are not able to do anything meaningful here. Probably the post uh, does not exist at all. So let's just uh, throw some exception here. Why not? So. Select the option throw exception and say something. Okay, new exception. Cannot do that. Exactly, that's fine. Okay. And now, if we, if, if we run that in the console, exactly this exception has been thrown from the method, exactly from the line when we stopped, when we presented the exception, and, and so on and so on. So definitely, this was uh, exactly what we, what we wanted to do and just skip the method. Uh, whether the question is whether such, uh, someone may ask whether such operations is somehow safe and it's really when you can roll everything back. No, that's not. As you can see, let's go one step further. Yeah, I see there's only three minutes left, so probably we probably we should somehow finish. But I think this, this also would be interesting. So let's go, let's go here. And go to this post service and let's go to the add post operation. And let's try, okay, set the breakpoint here and 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 run the, and go through this option. My title. My content. Yeah. And now let's decide. Okay, I don't want completely to somehow add this post, so let's try to throw an exception. Okay, yeah, it should be fine. Uh, to, no, the, the probably the second parenthesis is, a, is an excessive one, so let's go there. Okay, 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 let's come further. Of course, as you can see, the exception had been thrown, but if we are, if we look what are the, our posts, you can see the post has been added because if the function has done something permanent, for example, as adding something to our repository or something like that, even if we drop the frame, such things cannot be rolled back through all this stuff. So this is this, but even with, uh, without this, such things are very powerful ones, and in my opinion, gives us a lot of, uh, of, uh, of uh, mm, somehow uh, operations we can do. So, in my opinion, there are the very, very a lot of there are a lot of methods that we, for example, can use uh, to alter the execution of program. Somehow go back from some uh, from some some point of view when we somehow get into during the debugging and so on and so on. And in, uh, in, in I think that it should help a lot uh, for uh, all, you all during the debugging of the IntelliJ. Of course, what I have only presented here is the top of an iceberg. Definitely, I can recommend the, the official IntelliJ, uh, Jet, sorry, JetBrains, uh, movies on YouTube when they just, just put into the search bar something like IntelliJ debugger uh, JetBrains and you will find three parts of the video. Definitely, uh, definitely there are a lot, much more things, but the 45 minutes uh, lecture is definitely too less to sh show them all of them. But I think it's a good starting point that I have presented here. Thank you very much. If you want to, uh, let's, go also, let's go back to the presentation. The question is whether I'll be able to do that. Uh, uh, yeah. PowerPoint. Okay. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's, let's go from current slide. Because there is only one slide I will, at, at the end I wanted to present. Okay, why does it not work? Hmm. Usually, this is, yeah, it's exactly, from, it's exactly the problem. But I think this, this should be completely enough. If you want to somehow stay in touch with me and look into this repository and try it something on your own or don't hesitate to do that. Just scan our just scan this QR code. It will lead you to this GitHub repository. I also warmly invite you to look into the, my ad and other ones that I'm using during my trainings. And also, uh, there is a very good README included, so we'd be able to somehow use it on, on, on our own. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, feel free to ask me here. Thank you.